Hey there YouTube, Air of Carthage here. Gonna bring you some uh, 2v2 commentary on the Heda Mountains map. This map is, I guess in some ways, kinda similar to Floodplain, but not quite. Floodplain has a forest all the way through the center, but it seems like the circular outside forest here kinda reminds me of the Floodplains, although the, the terrain features aren't quite the same. Um, but in any case, uh, you can see I'm playing with HM Tavington, and both of our opponents are actually in the TWR clan. Uh, you have Sunny K and Sid there. I've never played against anybody in this clan. I don't, well, I mean, I could have easily because I've played a lot of battles, but I don't really remember. Um, so I wasn't really sure what to expect as far as play style. And uh, I'm just trying out a bunch of different armies. Uh, recently, I'm not even really sure what I'm into right at the moment. Uh, but I'm not really going to focus on my army at the beginning of this. We'll actually watch Tavington's side of the battle. And that's his army here in the blue. And he is facing off against... Um, a TWR Sid, and uh, let's take a look at Tavington's army. First of all, here's his um, here's his avatar. It is uh, Ching Pao Wing Wow, and it's a melee avatar. So, yep, there's his avatar. I'm not sure if that's like an accident for the default skin or no. Actually, that's not the default skin. Actually, pretty cool looking armor there. I like that. Uh, watch it be the default skin. I'll be wrong. Make an idiot out of myself. Anyway, it looks pretty cool. Um, so out here in the forest, he's got a hidden component. He's got two Yari Cab with uh, five chevrons, and he's got two great guards with uh, five chevrons. Um, so yeah, and then right here he's got a Matchlock Warrior Monk unit backed up by a Naginati Warrior Monk five chevron. Here in this woods, he's got a couple of Katana Cav, and then his main infantry component's made up of four um, very well uh, chevron uh, Katana infantry, and then he's got a unit of. Uh, Yari Ashigaru, it's, their name is I Wanna Die. Very appropriate name for such a unit. As you can definitely tell that it's a meat shield. Uh, yeah, and like I said, that's his general, the melee general. Let's go take a look at his opponent's army. I'll let you see my side of the action separately. So we'll just watch his from start to finish, and then we'll watch my side start to finish. Although you can see on the, um, on the mini-map that, you know, I'm deploying right here where that circle is. That's my army. Uh, Alright, so he, this guy's got four bow Ashigaru up front. I think two of them are uh, veterans. He's got a matchlock Ashigaru here. And then he's backing them up with uh, two Yari Ashigaru. Right here, let's see, he's got two Yari Cav, no upgrades. Uh, in this vicinity, though, are a couple of um, his teammates' cavalry, though. And then uh, right here, he's got uh, a couple of Katana infantry, two more Katana infantry. Here's Takeda Sid, that's his avatar. All these guys look like they may be wearing the default armor, actually. I wonder if my general is. And then he's got um, two Yari Cav out there. That's all we can see, at least, if he has any hidden units, which he does. Uh, you can see them right here. He had a matchlock Ashigaru hidden in the woods. The positioning was fair. They got ten kills. Uh, but the problem with matchlock Ashigaru is that they don't reload very quick. Uh, but he did have them very well guarded here with a unit of um, Yari Ashigaru. But the problem with Yari Ashigaru is is that they're a lot of times just too slow uh, to catch these cav units. Yari Samurai, and if you sprung them and then um, hit the quick run button, actually probably would have been more dangerous there, albeit they are more expensive. And you can also see that this unit's out here um, wavering when it hasn't even you know, been touched. So as soon as these uh, Naginata monks get them, these guys are going to kick the bucket. But he is um, good to reinforce all of his troops here. So you can see that Tavington's in a full-out engagement. Uh, he's engaged a couple of Yari Cav here, but then there's two more Yari Cav coming in. So even though he's got um, his two Great Guard units here, uh, numbers are working against him. Plus there's a Matchlock unit and his General in the vicinity, so this is indeed a very dangerous Cav situation. So his opponent, even though he's got lower quality units, um, is attempting to swamp Tavington and overwhelm him. So yeah, you can see uh, see here he cracked through one of the Yari Cav units and he's making a dash for this matchlock um, unit. Very good idea with one of his one of his great guard, uh, but his men are kind of only barely catching this matchlock unit, so that they are going to get shots off. And that's one of the worst things that can happen to your great guard is for a, a matchlock unit to fire at them because they are extremely tough, but they die just as easy to matchlock fire as any other unit in the game. So no matter what kind of unit you have, whether it's a hero or what. Um, they all die the same with matchlock fire. So yeah, here's a little bit of that action close up. He is gonna he is gonna take out this matchlock unit, but it's caused a lot more damage to his cab than he probably would have liked. Over here, you can see a further engagement as Naginata monks taking on some of these uh, katana samurai, and he's got his own katana cavalry mixed up in this. 
Um, there is some enemy Yari Cav in the mix though, and Yari Cav is very dangerous to Katana Cav. And there are also uh, spears nearby. So again, a very dangerous situation for Tabington. But back here, he's making a smart move, whoops, which is uh, moving his forces up while his cavalry engagement's going on. He's going to go ahead and engage the enemy, uh, the rest of the enemy spears, and this is going to keep his opponent from being able to commit all of his troops to reinforce this point. And so uh, it's definitely a good thing. But you can see that um, Tabington continues to micro his cav around and try and get better position and not just allow his units to get bogged down in the worst kind of fight. So uh, definitely some good moves uh, going out there to make the best of a, a situation that was kind of tough uh, at several different junctures. So here he's going to take off, leave those units there. Here's his melee general actually wheeling up on this, um, these two Yari Cav units. You can see these two Yari Cav are running away from his melee general. Uh, I'm not sure who would really win that fight. I'm not super familiar with melee generals. Uh, right here, there was probably a little bit of confusion. He did click an attack order. All of his guys end up hitting the same unit. Um, probably not completely ideal, but uh, you have to understand that these guys are pretty well chevroned, and they will mop up um, through the sword unit pretty quick, and he may not have just considered these spear units uh, to be much of a threat. This matchlock unit, this is a very close one. They just fired at his swords, as you saw, and it was unfortunate for the, uh, the Takeda player, very good for uh, Tabington because then they couldn't reload in time before his melee general came in here and wrecked him. So Tavington's definitely, um, definitely wrecking the flank now, uh, but his opponent has a whole bunch of bows left and still has some of his infantry in the fight, as well as his general. And you can also see some enemy cav over here that fortunately was not activated against Tavington. If um, this, this teammate here would have taken his cavalry out of wedge formation and smacked into his katanas before they could make the charge, that would have really messed up his charge. Uh, but again, uh, fortunately for Tavington, that did not happen. And he was able to do a good job and to pull this battle out, even though it probably got kind of hairy at a few moments. But you can see that it's definitely going to be a handy victory for him at this point. And um, you can probably see on the mini-map what's going on a little bit on my side, but trust me, you'll get to see my side here in just a moment. I just definitely want to show you what Tavington was up against here. So most of the, um, most of the forces of uh, Takeda Sid are routing now. And uh, here you can see some of his Katana infantry close up. They're going to go chasing after some of these archers. And uh, I think the archers are in skirmish, or at least some of them. No, they're not, actually. Yeah, they're not in skirmish. So there's some... Oh man, that was sweet! I don't know if anybody else just saw that kill animation, but that was pretty amazing. There's another nice stabbing going on right here. Wow, some nice kill animations. Let's watch him chase down some of these routing units, see if we get any more good kills. This looks like, uh, yeah, this is the enemy cavalry unit that was sitting back here. It got engaged while standing still. Uh, definitely not, uh, definitely a micro mistake on the part of, uh, let's see, what's the name of this player again? Oh, TWR Sunny K. Yeah, Sunny K um, should have uh, been keeping an eye on those cab butt. You know that I'm keeping him busy on my side of the battle, so it's, you know, that kind of stuff happens. I'm prone to the same stuff a lot. Uh, but Sunny K did attempt to throw some cavalry in here and uh, make, a, make an attempt to keep Tabington off his back while he's trying to fight me. Uh, definitely a worthwhile move, and it also gave his teammate a chance to run away with these bows and try and get even more shots off. So what was a pretty handy victory for Tabington is now a semi-dangerous situation. His general is almost dead, and his men are very beat up. Uh, but these are just Bow Ashigaru, and their reload speed and accuracy is not going to be as deadly as it could be, you know, had they ended up being Bow Samurai or uh, Bow Warrior Monks. And you can also see that because the uh, Takeda Sid's general has... Well, actually, his general isn't dead. You can see his general running around right here. <laughs> so here's Takeda Sid's general. He is down to 21 men, but he's going to be doing some, uh, some pretty valiant efforts to scrap this battle. Here you're going to see a charge into the rear of these katana units. <clears throat> He's just going to kill quite a few of them. You can actually see that some of Tavington's men are wavering. So again, yeah, a very dangerous situation uh, for Tavington, but he's got some, uh, some Naginata warrior monks that he's bringing in here as well. And you can see that he's just kind of having to chase down these bow units one by one. And you're really, if you end up in a situation like this where your opponent ends up with missile troops and you don't really have cavalry to chase them down, you really are best off to just go ahead and just chase these guys. Um, because if you can keep after them, they won't really be able to turn around and shoot you. You can see that this unit did go, these two units both went ahead and broke. And uh, the red general, uh, 
was actually still alive, but uh, let's see, where'd they go to? Where's the red? Okay, yeah, here's the red general. He is still alive. So Takeda Sid is still alive. You can see him running away from Tavington's units here. Uh, he's trying to just stay in there, I guess, put up some kind of some kind of crazy last effort. So, uh, yeah, here's here's that bodyguard. Again, it's Takeda Sid. You can see him running around right there. And um, I am actually... Oh, dang. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could have seen on the mini-map anyway, so I guess this isn't much of a spoiler that I won my battle over here. But I had this unit of Yari Cav, and I'm going to go ahead and give chase to this general. Uh, unfortunately, though, he pretty much gets away, and the battle ends. So that's all for Tavington's side. Now I'll show you my right, own. It's time to check this battle out from my point of view. Let's go ahead and take a look at my army. Uh, up front, I have three units of Matchlock Warrior Monks. Uh, there they are. I've been actually, uh, just like I said, tinkering around with some different kinds of armies. Uh, also up front, I have three units of um, very veteraned up uh, Yari Ashigaru. Uh, they have between five and seven chevrons. Uh, but, I mean, it's just Yari Ashigaru, so it's not like they're something amazing. And then I have two units of Bow Warrior Monks just behind them. And uh, then here is Patchy. I was actually using the floating wings for this battle. And I've changed his monk get up just a little bit so that he still looks kind of like a monk, but he's kind of like a monk samurai mix. Uh, I'm not liking the floating wings though. Albeit it's a little bit mystical, it's obviously some kind of glitch, and I kind of think the wings look cooler on his back, so I am going to change that again. But there's uh, Patchy the monk, slightly refined from the last time you saw him. And I think I'm going to change the color of the little balloons on his back. I haven't messed with that in a long time. I have two, um, yeah, two units of warrior nuns, and uh, here they are. I'm not really digging the brown look that they have. It's kind of ugly, actually. Especially since my army's colors are like purple and white and red. I don't understand why they have like the reddish brown color to them. I wish they had a cooler color scheme, but they're neat units. Um, like the color scheme of the warrior monks is way better. So yeah, anyway, I have two, uh, sorry, I think three warrior monks. No, actually I've only got two. I've got two, yeah, two warrior monks and two warrior nuns. And then I have a fourth Yari Ashigaru unit here. And then my cavalry, my cavalry is one Naginata warrior monk cav. And then I have one unit of uh, First Patchy's horse here, which is a Yari cav with eight chevrons. Very tough unit. Um, the thing with warrior monk cav and the reason why I brought them here, and you can see that I'm actually opening up some skirmishing. Let's take a look at my opponent's army before any of it gets beat up. He's got a unit of Katana Cav coming down here, and you can see that I'm going to pull them back and invite him into my Spear Wall, and that's pretty much going to be the case all the way down the line. He's got four bow units, three of them are Ashigaru, one Monk, uh, and then he's got two Yari Ashigaru units here, and then he's got some Yari Samurai, uh, Naginata Samurai, and a Katana Samurai. And then out here to the flank, he's got a couple more Cav units that you can see, which is uh, two more Yari Cav. Uh, here's his Avatar, which is um, Sunny K. And then he's got three more cav units out here, a katana cav, katana cav, and a yari cav. So he's got a lot of cav, very cav heavy. Uh, a lot of people tend to go very cav heavy, as you saw, Tavington was doing the same thing. Uh, it is, it, it can be quite an effective strategy, and in fact I use it quite a lot, as you've seen. Um, but it's, it's not a, it's not a win-all, take-all strategy either. And uh, really kind of depends on how you build your cavalry, how you use your cavalry and um, how you use it with your infantry that really determines whether or not you're going to win. Now you're going to see me taking a lot of bow fire in this battle. And some of you may see it and think like, holy crap, Air, you're just getting pummeled by those bows. Well, you know, I am taking some fire from the bows, but these guys are up in the trees. And you have to remember that matchlock units, you know, operate a lot different than bow units. Um, you know, bow units depend on, you know, wearing down their enemy and, and trying to get that, um, trying to get the enemy killed before they die. And so you may think that my opponent has a skirmish advantage, but he most definitely does not. And especially since he's letting me get closer to his bows, I just want you to see this real quick. That unit right there went from 100 down to 61 in one volley, and then it's getting hit by my bow warrior monks, and just absolutely routes in like five seconds there. And so the same thing's going to happen to this unit here, they're just going to get clobbered. Um, and so the matchlock uh, units have a huge morale effect uh, on the units that are getting fired at. So now the skirmishing advantage, which may have appeared to be very much in favor of my opponent, is now uh, on my side uh, by a long shot because his bow warrior monk is now just getting absolutely raked by my own. And Patchy is in, um, in stand and fight. And so that's why you're going to see my bow warrior monks just absolutely unleashing volley after volley. Now he continuously charges cavalry at the front of my line. And he does get to kill a few of my uh, Matchlock Warrior Monks here and there. 
but really all this is doing is just wearing his horses down, and he keeps hitting spear walls, and then on the way out, his um, units continue to take my bow warrior monk fire, and uh, it's just really bad for his cavalry, well, and, and this time they didn't take my bow warrior monk fire, well yeah, they are taking some, so yeah, check that out. Um, definitely not good for my opponent, uh, because his cavalry is really the strength of his army here. And if anything, what he should have done was just meat shielded with these Yari Ashigaru, and then charged his infantry in, because my infantry is a little bit better than his, um, but he could have used his cavalry to make up for that. Now, I wouldn't have made it easy for him by any means. I would have I would have kept spear units around my general and stuff like that, but I think it really would have been his best chance, because the longer he lets me sit here and take shots at him with this matchlock, the worse things are going to get. So here you can see me opening up on his uh, Yari units. Again, these guys are basically just a meat shield, but still, when you lose 40 men... In just a couple of seconds, <laughs> it's not good. Uh, Matchlock Warrior Monks can reload quickly, and they have excellent accuracy. Um, in fact, their accuracy is very good. And they can also fire at 125 range for a short period of time. And you can see this is actually a pretty good area for using Matchlock. And my spear units, although they're getting beat up from enemy missiles and enemy cav, you know, they're still sticking in that fight, and they're continuously, um, you know, for a fairly cheap price, providing a lot of kills for my army. And uh, their morale is pretty good too, again, because Patchy's in standard fight, and these guys have quite a few chevrons. So here's my matchlock popping back out again. These bow units came back from routing, but they're not going to be here long. <clears throat> Some matchlock fire, and my own bow warrior monks are going to drive these guys right off the battlefield again. One of my bow warrior monks just ran out of ammo. That's one of the things when you do have your uh, your bow warrior monks in a stand and fight area, and they're firing a lot, they will run out of ammo um, quite quickly, just because they can tear off so many volleys. And look again, my opponent's again charging two more units uh, right towards my spear wall. And um, this spear formation has a purpose. And it will kind it, it'll kind of help you break through a spear wall formation. You can see here that he just eventually clobbers his way through, but not without taking a lot of casualties. Um, and uh, the spear formation is really, really better at fighting other cavalry. Um, because the problem with it against infantry is... now. <laughs> Granted, against a spear wall, you don't want to prevent like a huge wide front because then your horses will die faster. But against infantry in general, the spear formation isn't that helpful because what it really does is it constricts uh, the, the frontal size of your uh, cavalry and really nerfs your charge bonus that the cavalry gets, especially when you're using Yari Cav. Um, so it, it's good against other cavalry, and I see people all the time online that just run their cavalry in spear formation no matter what, no matter what the situation is. And some of you have even asked me, like, Gary, how come you don't use the spear formation with your cav? Well, it's because I, I, I find it to be, you know, a little less than useful. And you're going to see another reason why. Look how tight and balled up all of his cavalry is. So they do get a side charge on these Naginata warrior monks. They didn't kill a single monk on the charge. And the Yari cav have a good bonus. And then look, now because he's in spear formation, all of his men are just grouped up in a nice little single file elementary school line. And I just completely cave in on him and just start to completely wreck his cavalry. So what would have otherwise been a, ca a powerful cavalry force is just dead in a matter of absolute seconds. Um, and then here he's trying to reinforce his cav with more infantry. But I'm going to pull a slick little stopping maneuver here with my, um, my uh, Yari Ashigaru. And that's what these Yari Ashigaru units are for. They're just to slow down your enemy and to keep his cavalry away and to protect your general. And then the striking force of my army is these uh, warrior monk and warrior nun units. The warrior nuns in particular, because the warrior monks don't really have much of an attack. So the matchlock is meant to whittle the enemy down. The warrior nuns are meant to deliver a, a, just a blazing um, attack. And then the warrior monks are meant to deliver the war cry. So my army is based on morale busting. And um, there are some certain weaknesses to my army though, and those weaknesses include numbers. I don't have huge numbers of men. And um, my army is also very prone to missiles. Um, so you can see that I did take quite a lot of missile damage, but once I get into a melee here, these warrior nuns will absolutely pwn any of these other units um, as far as attack goes. It's just that they don't have huge numbers. But you can see that I've activated Warcry, and immediately all these um, samurai units are going to just start wavering. And Patchy is still in stand and fight, and so you can see these guys are routing with like 90-something men left. So that's the kind of morale-busting effect that my army uh, was meant to have. It went extremely well. There are builds to which this army is weak, just like any other build in Shogun 2, um, but it can't be quite powerful if used properly. 
So you can see that against a, a cavalry heavy army, this build is particularly powerful, uh, just because the cavalry doesn't have the same impact that they would have against sword infantry. So my opponent's army collapsed really in a matter of seconds there, um, and it was really just due to the fact that he was he seemed to be extremely afraid of my matchlock units, which is understandable. Um, I did have a, a pretty daunting skirmishing component, but sometimes you just have to to be willing to sacrifice a couple of Yari, you know, spearmen or something, and just throw them in there, absorb the fire, and get your infantry engaged. And if he would have engaged my infantry, I would have had fewer units to use against his cavalry. He might have been able to kill my general, and uh, then that would have been that. So here we are back at the end of the battle where you saw last time, where I start to chase off to Kata Sid. Hope you enjoyed the battle. I don't believe I actually saved the results screen, so uh, if I did, though, I'll, I'll splice it in, but I don't think I did. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks to Tabington for uh, playing the match with me. And I'll bring you more 2v2 commentaries in the future as I am able to get them.